Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This time out, we are checking out an example of what I would call the Yukon ecosystem, a system that allows us to remote control, get hands-on with what's happening inside of Pro Tools using control surfaces, as well as a new app that runs in an iPad. So what we have going on here is a MacBook Pro running Pro Tools 12. I've got an Artist Mix control surface. I've got an Artist Transport. And then I have an iPad that's running Pro Tools Control, a new free app that allows us to remote control by Wi-Fi what's happening inside of Pro Tools, as well as with our Yukon devices. Let's begin by checking out Pro Tools Control. What this app does is connect your computer by Wi-Fi and basically gives you a mirror of what's happening inside the computer on the iPad screen. So if we hit play, we've got transport controls. We can see the meters are operating here. We can stop, we can rewind, we can go into loop mode, we can hit record enable. We can also move a fader. When we move a fader on the iPad, it moves inside, the, uh, inside Pro Tools. We can solo a track, come back out of solo, of course. We can mute tracks, we can record enable individual tracks, we can go into input monitoring if we have Pro Tools HD. We can also set our uh, automation modes. You can read, write, touch, latch. All those things can be set here. The colors follow the way you have things color-coded inside of Pro Tools, and we can scroll across all of the different tracks that we have loaded, and the colors follow those. So it gives us great hands-on control over what's happening inside of Pro Tools. Our second view is Tracks View, which gives us a little different representation of what's happening inside of Pro Tools. Each of these squares represents one of the tracks inside of Pro Tools, and then using these four or five buttons down here at the bottom, we can select what happens when you touch those squares. So we can select a track in this particular mode, we can also select multiple tracks. You can deselect tracks. And if we hit another button, for example, if we hit the solo button here, any track we touch will instantly be soloed. We can double tap that to go out of solo, to clear all the solo on all the tracks. We can scroll through all the different tracks. So it gives us a very fast way to locate across our mixer. You'll see that things are changing there inside of Pro Tools as we select tracks and as we change the different controls. This screen also has meters, so we can see what's happening with our levels on many tracks simultaneously. It's a very fast way to navigate a larger session. In either of these screens, we can access soft keys. So if we hit the soft key button, across the bottom here, we get banks of different soft keys. You can go into the Yukon application and customize these. You can assign any control anywhere. And we can scroll through a number of different sets of these, and they could be all sorts of controls or commands that are inside of Pro Tools that you use frequently. You can also custom control keystrokes and assign those and have them operate your DAW. There are so many things you can do with soft keys. You can see that we've got a number of different things assigned here. We've got everything from count off to click on here. Uh, we can also jump to the home uh, button, which takes us to a basic set of controls. We can access memory locations. So it comes preloaded with all sorts of commands already in the soft keys. And then, as I mentioned, you can go in and customize as, those as you want. And finally, even when you're in this tracks view, we can hit the fader button. And whatever track is selected, the fader will automatically open for that. So if we skip over here and open this one, we jump to that fader. And now we've got a fader with a pan control and all the other controls for that track accessible instantly. So even when you're looking at this overview of what's happening inside the tracks, you can still quickly call up a fader and make changes to the parameters. So Pro Tools Control is a must-have app if you're using Pro Tools and you have an iPad, because it does let you get hands-on and give you instant access to so many of those controls that makes working in Pro Tools even faster. But it really comes to life when you combine it with an Artist Controller, an Artist Mix, an Artist Transport, or an S3. The reason Pro Tools Control is such an ideal companion for an S3, an Artist Mix, or an Artist Transport is because it gives you instant access for locating tracks that you want to work on. For example, in this case, I've got a single Artist Mix with eight faders, but my session has many, many more tracks than that. Locating the track you want to jump to or the bank of tracks you want to work on can take some time and it actually slows you down in your workflow. But using this screen, the track screen, inside Pro Tools Control, you can instantly jump to any track and the controller instantly follows. And we can also use the universe to scroll up here and move across the different tracks. And again, the artist mix will follow right along behind us. This all becomes even more powerful when you start factoring layouts into the equation. Now, a layout is a group of tracks that you lay out across the faders on an artist mix or another artist controller. Basically, the way that works is we select a particular set of tracks. For example, we might want to look at just the drum tracks. When we hit that, the drum tracks will now be arrayed across our artist mix. If we hit bass guitar, just the guitar and bass tracks will be arrayed across here. We can also look at all. We can look at uh, keyboards. We can look at subgroups. We can look at effects, returns, VCAs. So I've got these different layouts set up that call up just those tracks in my artist mix. It makes it very fast to navigate and grab exactly what I want. Another thing we can do here, let's go back to all our tracks as our layout. If we go to track types, 
we can show and hide different types of tracks. So we might want to look at just our aux inputs. So if we hit that button, now the only thing that's being displayed are our aux returns. We can also look at our uh, VCAs. Where are they at here? There's VCA master. So now we're looking at those and the aux inputs. We can turn the aux inputs off. So you can quickly jump to just the type of track you want to work on. Now in particular, when you're working in tracks view, you really don't even have to be on the mixer in Pro Tools. You can pop over here to audio screen, and I have the artist transport here, and I've assigned the wheel to control a variety of different parameters. So for example, my first one here is basically scrolling back and forth within my session for editing. I've got another button set up to where I'm scrolling vertically through my different tracks. We've got one here that zooms me in and out horizontally. I've got one set up that'll zoom one track, or all tracks, in and out. And also we can zoom the waveform in and out. So combining an artist transport with what's happening with the artist mix and what's happening inside Pro Tools control gives us a lot of hands-on control here. And of course, we also have our transport controls that are arrayed around the wheel here. The numbers you could assign to memory locations or just about any other function that you want. Everything is so configurable when you're using Yukon. You install the Yukon app. It'll open up here if I hit that. Basically, this is showing us the different surfaces I have connected. I have an MC mix here, the MC transport, and PT control is Pro Tools control that's running here in the iPad. We can look at our workstations. In this case, we have Pro Tools. And you can have more than one workstation running simultaneously. Or in fact, you can have more than one computer connected simultaneously. Well, we've also got a variety of other settings and preferences here that you can access, different things that you'll use for setting up Pro Tools and the way it interoperates with your uh, different surfaces and things. Here's where we assign our layouts so we can set up what tracks are being displayed when you hit a particular layout. Now, this is also where we set up our soft keys. Now, this pertains to more than just the soft keys that are on our Pro Tools control app. We also have control over what's assigned to all of the different functions inside our hardware controllers. For example, here, we've got the row of buttons that's on the face of the artist transport, and we can assign the functions that are, that are matched up there. And we can go through all of those different uh, settings and customize exactly the way you want everything to operate. This is, for example, where we set up the soft keys that are inside Pro Tools control. Now, if you've checked out the S6 controller from Avid, then you're pretty familiar with the way this all looks. This is the same type of screen as you'd see in the master control module in S6. Again, you tap to select, and then you can make different changes to parameters. We have our soft keys. We have our control surface. This whole thing really takes operating Pro Tools or another Yukon-enabled application to an entirely new level. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at what I call the Yukon ecosystem. This whole thing works together so well. It's so integrated. It really lets you get hands-on with Pro Tools or your Yukon apps. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.